Let's go through the mechanism here. Those are R groups, just I mean it's a ketone, right? Right, okay. Remember that the conventional way here is to think this is a methyl group and this is a methyl group. Okay. So this is acetone. Just some technicalities. The tail of this arrow shouldn't be on the negative charge. It should be on this bond. Because remember, it's not the aluminum that's the nucleophile. It's the hydrogen. And the hydrogen is getting the electrons out of this bond. So that's a technicality. Um, and the protonator here isn't water. It's hydronium. Because we're adding hydronium in this step. Maybe you got that already. I just, oh, yeah, that's right. You do well. You just have the positive charge. OK, very good. This is a reaction we've already seen in the past. This was a category one reaction. We just have memorized that lithium aluminum hydride gives us a category one reaction. And not to be fooled that hydrogen in this case is the nucleophile. Right. Because that, that yeah, be hydrogen is the nucleophile. You don't That's right. sell them C. Right. Now, is, is not the, um, the sodium boral hydride less reactive? That's right. So um, that would favor attack of a ketone or an aldehyde more? Um, all we need to or say is, sorry, like, because some, I, I right. know some of my questions have had a carboxylic acid at one end and the right. alkene and, one, and the ketone at the other. Ah, so good point. Uh, That's right. Sodium boral hydride is just going to attack the ketone. That's right. It's not going to mess with the carboxylic acid. That is a good analysis. That's right. Absolutely. All right. So I was going to say, you could get the same result using sodium boral hydride here. You're right that sodium boral hydride is less reactive, but it's still reactive enough to attack an aldehyde or a ketone. Because it is less reactive, it can be dissolved in a protic solvent, whereas lithium aluminum hydride has to be kept separate from the protic solvent. So here we have to use an aprotic solvent, like an ether, in the first step. All right, this is a reaction we've seen in the past, a category one reaction on an aldehyde or a ketone. So this is what lithium aluminum hydride does to aldehyde or ketones. It turns them into alcohols. This is another reaction that we've saw in the past. And we said that the mechanism here is a little weird or surprising, so we're not going to worry about it. We just need to know how to, what the product is. Okay. Um, we haven't talked about this too much. Do you remember what the product would look like here? Give it a shot to see if you can remember what the product would be here.
That's actually right. We're simply going to turn the carboxy carbon into an alcohol carbon. We've simply turned the carboxy carbon into an alcohol carbon. So by the way, how many hidden hydrogens must this have, too? So you can either draw those or not, depending on what you like. And so um, where did the other, I understood, were there two separate hydro, were there two separate attacks on the nucleic valve? Cause yeah. Is that what the case was? That's right. So there's a whole bunch of things that happen here. Uh, but yeah. Just so I can where, get, where do you think get these an idea of where from? the lithium aluminum uh, right. hydride. And where do you think this hydrogen came from? That came from the, um, the hydronium. Right. What types of hydrogens would end up on this carbon? Nucleophilic hydrogens. This carbon is electrophilic. So it would be nucleophilic hydrogens that would end up here. Well, the nucleophilic hydrogens come from here. But what types of hydrogens would end up on an oxygen? Electrophilic hydrogens, because the oxygen is nucleophilic. Mm -hmm. So since the oxygen here is nucleophilic and the carbon is electrophilic, we would expect that nucleophilic hydrogens would end up on the carbon and electrophilic hydrogens would end up on the oxygen. So these nucleophilic hydrogens must have come from here, and then the electrophilic hydrogen came from here. Uh, the mechanism uh, we won't go through uh, is it, actually kind of weird and surprising. There's some things that happened there that you might not have predicted. Um, the first thing that this actually does is deprotonate the carboxylic acid. But then even with the negative charge, it still attacks two more times. Um, so we won't go through all those details. We'll just memorize. Uh, but it is good to know that these two hydrogens came from here, and this came from here. OK. This is a pretty important reaction. I think you mentioned that you might have seen yes. something like it on the test. So you want to make a flashcard on that and drill it on it. And also make a note to yourself that we're not going to worry about the mechanism here. Would this work in basic conditions as well? Uh, let's see. Well, the first step is oh, basic conditions. conditions. Okay. Um, and we need this to put the hydrogen on here. If you, if you did this solely in basic conditions, then this would be the final product. Yes. But usually you don't want this to be the final product. Usually you want the alcohol. All right. So you have to add the hydronium. Now, sodium borohydride doesn't do this. Sodium borohydride is too weak okay. to do this. So uh, we're not going to put sodium borohydride here. I guess the sodium borohydride might deprotonate the carboxylic acid, but no one ever seems to talk about this. So we wouldn't usually use sodium borohydride with the carboxylic acid. Just real quickly, uh, how we were talking about um, the CO2 and the Grignard, uh reaction to form a carboxylic acid. Right. On what, uh, the carbonyl is going to be formed on the uh, CO2 carbon or the right. Grignard carbon? On the CO2. Okay. Because mm -hmm. notice how, of course, the carboxy carbon has to have lots of oxygens. Sure. Well, the car carbon dioxide starts with lots okay. of bonds to oxygen. Okay. That's right. So you can review that in your notes and you'll see that it was the carbon dioxide carbon that transmitted the, the carboxy carbon. carbon. Okay. That's right. It's already, in fact, it has to get a little less oxidized. Carbon dioxide starts with four bonds to oxygen. But then the grid yard replaces one of those, and then you have three bonds to oxygen. All right. reasonable first step. Can you think of anything that would be a reasonable first thing to have happen here? This is a reaction we haven't talked about yet. Um, uh, nucleophilic hydrogen attack. Yes, I'll show that.
That's excellent. But what next? 